This is a day that the Lord has made, so we might rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the worship of the risen Lord and Savior. We are glad that you are all here, especially if you are first time visitor. We are glad that you're sharing your morning with us uh, this day. And we do have visitor gift bags, some gift for you bag uh, at the welcome desk. If you didn't get one already, please be sure to pick up one on your way out. And if you can register your visit, we would like to have opportunity to get to know you a little bit a better and to know how we can pray for you and how can we be a blessing for you. And our prayer is that your, your worshiping with us this morning will be the highlight of your week. Welcome and thank you for being here with us. Just a few announcements uh, to make before we go to the worship tonight. There will be no youth meeting, but we will have Sunday evening service. We will continue uh, studying the Ten Commandments and tonight we're going to focus on the Fourth Commandment, uh, keeping the Lord's Day holy and what that means. So we'd like to invite you to be here tonight uh, for the evening service. Next Sunday, we will have only one service. We will have a graduate recognition Sunday. We have three graduates among us who we'll graduate and we're going to honor them and we're going to have a special service. So there will be only one service at 11 o'clock. So next Sunday, one service at 11 o'clock and there will be no evening service next Sunday because North Johnston High School will have graduation ceremony here at our church at evening. VBS is coming. Flyers are in your bulletin. We also have extra flyers at the welcome desk. Please take some and pass it to your friends, to family members, to kids that you know and invite them to come. Registration forms are also at the welcome desk and you can also register on our web page, kenleybaptist.com. We will also, uh, during this week, uh, go and pass these flyers so anyone who is interested to go and help us passing uh, flyers in the neighborhood just let me know after the service we're going to go several times during this week during the course of next two weeks and this is a great opportunity to invite our neighbors to come here and experience God at VBS wonderful program that we have you also have a shine uh, here uh, announcements is here if you need more information contact Pastor George about it And that's it. Is there anything else? We need to keep, we just got a, a, a news from little Matty. She ended up in the hospital last night with high fever. And she had urinary tract infection after the surgery. We still don't know what's going on. But let's keep little Matty in our prayers and bring her to the Lord this morning. Is there anything else that we need to announce? If not, let's come to the Lord in prayer and ask for his blessing. Father, we are thankful for this day. As your word says that in everything we should give thanks. And Father, we give you thanks this morning for who you are and for what you're doing. And Father, on this Memorial Day weekend as we remember the men and women of the armed forces who have made their ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms that we enjoy every day. Father, we think of the words of Jesus who said, greater love has no one than this that he may lay down his life for his friends. And Father, this morning we thank you for the fallen heroes and their love. And Father, we pray for the members of our armed forces. Father, we pray that you will give them courage to face each day. And Father, we pray that they will trust in your power so that they will be able to accomplish each task that you call them to do. Lord, we also remember the families of our troops. We ask for your unique blessings to fill their homes. And we pray for your peace, provision, and strength to fill their lives. And Lord, as we come into your presence this morning, we also want to thank you for the Holy Spirit, the one who brings freedom to captives, freedom into our lives so we can be all that you want us to be. And we praise you for his work in our lives, Lord. And we pray that this morning as we come into your presence and worship you by studying your word, by singing praises to you. We pray that the Holy Spirit will work in our lives and we pray that all of us will have our eyes open so that we will be able to see the truth. We pray that our hearts will be touched so that we will love the truth. We pray that our wills will be touched so we can obey the truth and we pray that you will give us courage to stand up for the truth and boldly proclaim it until you come back. We want to be faithful servants, good stewards. Father, use us. 
bless us so we can be a blessing. And Lord, we are thankful that for your promise that you said as we come and seek the kingdom of God first, that everything else that we need in life shall be added to us, Lord. And we bring to you also our needs this morning. Specifically, Lord, we come for little Mary. She's having high fever. She's back in the hospital after the surgery that she had. Lord, we just pray that you will be with all the doctors and medical staff that are assigned to take care of her. We pray that you will give them wisdom and focus, sensitivity. And Lord, we pray for healing too, that you will be with her, give her special strength, give her grace, Lord. And we pray that your peace will also be upon her family members to guard their minds and their hearts. And Lord, let them put trust in you. And thank you that you are trustworthy God. And we praise you for your grace. Father, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and your love and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be now with us as we worship you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join us as we begin our worship this morning. loved us. Let's continue to lift him up for his love that never fails.
served. Um, we know that no matter what, uh, this country would not be who it is without the Lord. And, and we just pray that those who've, who've lost family members, those who've been behind those and been apart from family members, we just know that um, the Lord is always there for you. And you can always call upon him. It says in Psalm 92, it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to his name, to declare his loving kindness in the morning and his faithfulness every night. And we'll continue to declare God's loving kindness and, and faithfulness as we continue to worship with our financial gifts and also uh, care cards will be passed to all of you. We'd like to encourage to, to you to take these care cards and write down everything that you are thankful for the Lord, where he demonstrated his loving kindness and faithfulness in your life, this is an opportunity to express praise on this card. Also, if you have any need, 
He just declared with this song, we need our Lord every day for everything. He is the Lord and he is there to help us. He said, cast your care upon me because I care. He cares. So write down if you have any prayer requests and we'll bring this to the Lord. Keep our eyes on him and pray with you for your needs that God will show his power great in your life. Let's ask for Lord's blessing upon this part of service. Father, we acknowledge that you are a God of provision. You provide us with everything we need, Lord. You own everything, Lord. You've created everything. Everything that has life comes from you, Father. All that we have comes from you, Father. And I thank you for that. Father, may we be found faithful to you in our giving. Father, in giving of ourselves first and giving of our monetary values, Father. Father, may we just focus in on you today. Thank you for your sweet spirit that's among us, Lord that's in this place right now, Father. And we know you are a God who heals, who restores. Father, you are such a wonderful and magnificent God, Father. We don't deserve it, Lord. Thank you for being a God of righteousness, Father. It's your righteousness and your holiness, Father, that makes us who we are. And we need you, Father. I thank you for all you do, Lord. Thank you for this day that we celebrate as Memorial Day, Father. Thank you for those who have given their lives in defense to keep us free, Lord, in this country, Lord. Father, for all the military people, men and women who are serving in our nation, thank you for the policemen, for the <coughs> state patrolmen, Father, for all those who watch over us, protecting us, Father, and they are in the institution that you placed them in, Father. May we submit and be under their authority, Father. Father, may we submit to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please be seated. The special music this morning is entitled entitled <laughs> is titled <laughs> always and counting every blessing um i think uh you know we're in a we're in a spiritual war all the time regardless of whether or not we can feel it sometimes i think the lord is with us and protecting us and shielding us from some of the uh, arrows and slings so we feel pretty good but uh, if you can't see the people who are hurting around you then you just pray that uh, you open, lord opens your eyes to the situations that uh, you can share his love in um i know that uh, even during these all these times when you may feel down, you know, the Lord has blessed us severely. So uh, we just uh, need to remember to count every blessing.
leading us in this time of worship. At this time, if there are any children that would like to go to Children's Church, BJ and Allison there and Melissa will take you to your classrooms here on the right. If there are any children that would like to go to Children's Church, you can follow our teachers. We're thankful for them, thankful for a few. All right, Pastor Bobby will share the message with us this morning. Today being Memorial Day, I asked uh, Wayne Crumpler if he would uh, help provide somebody for us. To A lot of people get confused with Veterans Day and Memorial Day and the significance of the different events. And Wayne being involved in American Legion, he didn't hesitate. He said, I know exactly who to send. And so uh, we asked Jackie Balance to come and take a few moments to explain to us the significance of this special day. Brother Jackie, please. Good morning, I'm Jackie Balance. I'm the uh, commander of the most elite civil organization in all the world here in Kinley. The only way that you can join us is that you've served your country honorably in the uniform, the United States. And uh, I proudly carry this with me. Um, I was asked to speak and then when I got here, the pastor told me I had five minutes. So I'm doing away with all of this. Uh, for all of you young people, and I won't even ask the veterans to stand up because I don't see any. Uh, there may be one. But um, for you young people, I would like for you to stop for just a moment and think. What if Tuesday morning you received an official letter from the United States government telling you to report to Fort Polk, Louisiana on June the 25th for a period of three years in service to your country? You've got a wife, you've got a home, you've got car payments, house payments, and all of that, and all of a sudden, it was all snatched away, and you were going away for service to your country. That is what happened to a lot of us, uh, quite a few thousand of us, uh, back when the military still had the draft. Just think, what would you do? I had a beautiful wife. I know you don't think so, uh, but she was. And I had a lovely little home that we had just bought. And then I received a letter telling me to report to Fort Bragg. And I did. We got rid of the house. She moved back in with her parents. I uh, didn't want to kill anyone, so I volunteered for the medical corps. And for any of you that have ever been first responders, or any of you that happen to be nurses or worked in hospitals, you don't know what it's like to start an IV in a helicopter that's dodging rocket fire, 50 caliber bullet shells, casings, bouncing off your helmet. I hope that you never have to experience that, but that's what we as combat medics were trained to do. Um, I didn't want to kill anyone, and I certainly didn't want to get killed. But an easy number to remember is that during the Vietnam War, 4,404 combat medics were killed. Veterans Day honors those of us that God brought home. Memorial Day is our honoring those that gave their lives so that we may be in church today, so that we may have the freedoms that we have, so that we can do the things that we are going to do this afternoon and tomorrow. They gave the ultimate sacrifice. Whenever 
we went out on a mission in helicopters. Uh, we belonged to a group called SOAR, S-O-A-R, Strategic Operations Aerial Recovery. Our motto was never leave anyone behind. And just as we got ready to jump from those helicopters, written up above the door was John 15, 13. And as we went in our army barracks and everywhere that we went, we always saw John 15, 13 written above the door. I'm not going to tell you what that is. I'll let you look it up and you'll remember it a lot longer. Um, as the American Legion here in Kinley, our motto is, we're still serving. We never quit. And I want you to know that if you need copies of the Constitution, if you need someone to attend your school and give a class on history, uh, turn to us. Uh, we've got a lot of able-bodied people that would love to help. Now, for Memorial Day, Memorial Day started uh, its first records in 1861. That was the beginning of the Civil War. And soldiers from the South, called Confederate soldiers, and soldiers from the North, called Union soldiers, were getting killed, getting killed by massive numbers. And a lot of times her bodies were taken home and buried in family cemeteries or in church uh, grounds. And so in the second week of May, it became kind of customary because flowers were beginning to bloom to go and decorate the graves. That turned into family reunions at the gravesite. And then it turned into church on the grounds at churches. And it went that way called Decoration Day in the North and the South for many years. And then somebody adopted the term Memorial Day. And here in the South, we celebrated Confederate Memorial Day on the second weekend uh, in May. And that's because in the South, our flowers were beginning to bloom and we could decorate the graves. Funny how traditions start. In the North, they did it on the last Monday in May because that's when their flowers were coming out, two weeks behind us. And it went that way until 1971 when the uh, Congress and the president signed into an act making Memorial Day a national holiday. It's always the last Monday in May. Now, let me give you some figures, something for you to think about, uh, especially tomorrow. Most all of you are off. Uh, you will have time to give some thought to some of the things that I'm going to tell you. Try to keep these figures in mind if you possibly can. I won't start with Revolutionary War. I'll just start with the ones that you probably know about. The Civil War. If you can envision this, 365,000 Union soldiers were killed. 260,000 Confederate soldiers were killed. 1,031,800 were severely wounded. Isn't that number mind-boggling? World War I, we lost, and that was 1917 to 1918 when our participation. We lost 53,500 were killed in action, 208,000 were wounded. And what a lot of people in history doesn't tell you is those that came home 
brought a rare form of influenza, and over two million people in the United States died in the following year as a result of that influenza. World War II, the one that you've seen the movies about, and I hope that all of you have seen Saving Private Ryan, because that landing on the beach where the bodies were floating uh, and the people were getting slaughtered, we had three people from the little town of Kinley in that first wave. We can be very proud of that. We've got 368 uh, veterans that gave their lives in the Kinley Cemetery. Tomorrow we'll be placing a wreath along with the Boy Scouts there. World War II, there were 405,000 killed, 670,000 wounded. The Korean War, 1950 to 1953, we lost 36,500 killed. And then the Vietnam War, the one that some of you have heard about, and the one that people of my age group participated in. 58,209 were killed in Vietnam. 183,000 were wounded and came home. The war in Afghanistan and Iraq, we have lost 7,000 so far. And what I would like for you to think about tomorrow is what these people died for, what they fought for. History is not taught much anymore. But World War II and Adolf Hitler, if God hadn't intervened and the United States been able to do what it did, we would all be speaking German today. He was that close to taking over the world. We would all be atheists. There would be no churches. Uh, it would be quite a different life. In total, we have lost 1,354,600 people have died on the battlefield for what we enjoy today. And I would like for you tomorrow to look at your children, to look at your family, and think about the fact that every time one of those soldiers died, his mother and daddy cried. Four grandparents cried. Probably a brother or sister cried. Think of what the families went through each time one of these numbers was called out. Um, Memorial Day and what these people have done for us is something that we should take a moment and just thank God for them, for their lives, and pray for all the families uh, that have been affected and are still uh, being affected. Our country at the present time, I feel like is under full attack by the devil. I feel like he has gone wide open recently. And that is not what these people died for. So I would like to ask you to become involved as young people. You're the future. Whenever you see things that are going against your church, against your religion, against your way of life, and against this country's way of life, call your senator, call your representative, let them know. We don't need to be a silent majority. We need to be standing up. I feel like the greatest book, well, I know it is, the greatest book ever written, the Bible, is inspired by God. And I feel that our Constitution was inspired by God, and it was written 
by a lot of God-fearing people. They weren't perfect, but they did an excellent job. And what they did, what they wrote, and what God helped them do is why we can be here today. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Brother Jackie, for sharing a word with us and reminding us of what a great sacrifice was made on our behalf for us to be able to be here today. Uh, I hadn't thought about it. I, I wouldn't have done good speaking German. I, some of you may have learned it and would be able to speak it. I probably wouldn't have done well at it. Uh, I struggled with English, so I'm not sure I could have handled German, and I'm grateful for our American soldiers that helped to stop that from happening. I had three brothers and a brother-in-law all make careers out of Marines. Uh, two of them were in Korea. All four of them were in Vietnam. And so, thankfully, they came home. I teach a Sunday school class when I attend Hell's Chapel, and one of the men in my class, his brother got killed in Vietnam. A boy that worked with me, I was working my way through NC State University, working at Winn-Dixie in Raleigh, and one of our boys, the very first day he went on patrol in Vietnam, was shot by a sniper and killed. So it does affect families, and I'm just grateful for those that have given so much. And let's take a moment of silence, and then I will lead us in a word of prayer. Father, we know that the freedoms we enjoy this, in this country did not come free. Lord, many families lost loved ones over the years fighting for America, for the freedoms we enjoy, or for principles that America wants to uphold around the world. Even today, many families have loved ones on the battlefields in places around the world, some of them not noted as a battlefield, but in very hostile environments even today. Lord, we thank you for their faithfulness to serve. We ask your protection upon them. And pray, Lord, that you will bring them home safely. And Lord, we look for the day when wars will cease. But from what we know that Scripture says, it will be only when Jesus reigns. So, Lord, have your way. We'll give you thanks and praise for what you do. Take these moments as we worship together and speak to our hearts, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Chosen as a title for our message this morning, Needing Help, and our scriptures from Psalm chapter 121, verses 1 through 8. Psalm 121, beginning with verse 1. I lift my eyes toward the mountains. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. Your protector will not slumber. Indeed, the protector of Israel does not slumber or sleep. The Lord protects you. The Lord is a shelter right by your side. The sun will not strike you by day or the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all harm. He will protect your life. The Lord will protect your coming and going, both now and forever. We read a lot of the Psalms and have no idea exactly what it means other than the words that we see on the page. We, we don't understand the significance of how it was written or why it was written. This Psalm was written by King Hezekiah at a time in the history of Israel that they were in somewhat of a desperate situation. They were facing a war that they did not want, a war that they were unprepared for. There was absolutely no way they could win, totally, massively outnumbered, many, many, many thousands more enemy troops than there were Israeli troops. In 2 Chronicles 31, 21, it says that Hezekiah was diligent in every deed that he began in the service of God's temple, in the law, and the commandments, in order to seek his God, and he prospered. 
Hezekiah had decided that we're going to return to worshiping one God and one God alone. Before that time, they had idols on the mountains and people would go up in the mountains and pray to whatever God they wanted to. And he said, no, we're going to worship one God and that will be the one that we know as the God of creation. That next chapter of uh, 2 Chronicles 32 says the Assyrian army began to lay siege to Israel and they were surrounding Israel with armies up on those mountains that the people used to go to and pray on. And Hezekiah had sent a word to them in 2 Chronicles 32, verse 7 and 8. He tells the people, don't be afraid or discouraged before the king of Assyria or before all the multitudes that are with him. There are more with us than with him. He only has human strength, but we have the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. <coughs> One thing to say that, another thing to believe that. Listen, if God is going to fight our battles for us, then why are we having all the troubles that we have, you know? Why do we get discouraged? Well, let's talk about that a little bit this morning. Hezekiah was struggling because he knew that the Assyrian army was ruthless. Every other nation that had been in battle with them had lost. None of the gods that they worshipped had been successful in delivering their people. And Psalm 121 was written to deal with this terrible situation. And he's struggling and he's asking, where can I turn for help? That's point one. Where can I turn for help? All around Jerusalem were hills. And as I said, many of the people used to go up there and worship on those hills. And Hezekiah had stopped that. He'd had all those false shrines destroyed. We're only going to worship in the temple in Jerusalem. You come here to worship. Uh, the people really not sure what all that meant, but they were trying to obey what the king had said. And the king is over here praying, Lord, where does my help come from? I, I, I know it comes from you, but Lord, I look out the window of my palace and I see the enemy all around us. Am I certain that you're going to deliver? We have problems and situations in our lives that we're people of faith and we believe God can take care of until the doctor says, you've got cancer. And all of a sudden, we're not sure God can handle our problem. I remember when my boys, who are in their 40s now, but I remember when they were infants, one or two years of age, toddlers, both of them at different times had to have surgery. I believe God can take care of my child in surgery. But when they roll your child through them operating room doors and you can't go, I don't know where that person can take care of them or not. And I'm about here somewhat distressed. A man of faith, but also a man of doubt right now because I'm not sure... They're going to take care of my child like I would take care of my child. But my wife wouldn't let me do the surgery. So we had to let the doctor do it at that point. You know how that goes. So, you know, we know our help comes from the Lord, but in the middle of a crisis type situation, it's a natural thing for us to have some doubt. We in America, we're involved in a war, whether we get to talk about it much or not, we're involved in a war around the world with different ideologies, people that would like to change the American life. In fact, there are some that would destroy us if they could. Where does our help come from? I'm grateful for the military. I really am because I believe they can stop a lot of this from happening. 9-11 uh, was one of those events that happened that our military was not expecting even though we knew that the enemy would do something drastic if they could, but nobody had ever seen that before. And my daughter was a flight attendant at that time. I had no idea where she was. She could have been on one of those planes. A day or two before, she had flown out of the same airport that those planes came out of. 
Uh, it'll scare the daylights out of you when you realize something like that is totally out of control. We, we face enemies in our world who have no regard for human life. They don't care who they kill. Can we depend on the government to take care of that? <laughs> uh, we can't even agree on whether we're going to pass the simplest resolution in our government anymore. If I vote with them, I might not get reelected. And so nobody's working together to solve the problems of our country. I'm grateful for the military because they have to clean up a lot of messes our politicians make. What a sad day. We live in a time when what is right is often called wrong. And what the Bible says is absolutely wrong, the Supreme Court will okay it and says that it's all right. God help this country. Until God is allowed to lead this nation, problems will only grow worse. And we're seeing it everywhere we go. America's in trouble. School shootings are happening over and over again. Those of you that are teachers, you live with that threat, don't you? I mean, it, it, it's not something you expect. It's not right, but nobody knows when it's going to be. The one that happened in Indianapolis this week, the reports are, that the teacher saw the man pull the gun, the young man, it was a student at school, and tackled him to the ground, even though he got shot three times. What teacher would want to go to school today or tomorrow, Tuesday, since it's a holiday, what teacher would want to go to school and think, I may get shot three times today at school? What police officer wants to put on a uniform when he knows somebody will think it's a great thing just to walk up behind him and shoot him just for principle. America is in trouble today. Where does our help come from? It comes from the Lord. Secondly, what kind of God can help? Hezekiah got rid of all the idols. He knew they couldn't help. I know they can't help. But there are a lot of people that think maybe some God other than the one we worship is out there somewhere. And so they're praying to some unknown God, hoping that they can find help for their lives. When God gave the commandments, he told the people not to have any other God but him. But the nation had turned away from that. In verse 2 of our scripture, the psalm says, Our God is the maker of heaven and earth. He created all that we can see. Science tells us that our solar system is one of many. I'm not a scientist. I'm going to read you some stuff right now because I'm not smart enough to get it memorized. I just want to tell you what I found on the internet about our solar system. Our sun is of average size. It's not the largest star. It's not the smallest. It's kind of an average size. Someone described the sun this way. I'll be honest with you, I don't have any idea how they measured this. But these are the facts that they say. The sun has a diameter of 864,000 miles. Now, that's a pretty big object. We're far enough away that we don't sense that. Uh, I was driving, going to work one morning over at Wendell, and it was really, really foggy. And on that morning, it literally, because of the way the fog was, it looked like the moon was falling. It was still visible, and the further I went, the lower it was coming. And it wasn't that it was sitting on the Pacific side. It looked like it was falling right in front of me. I thought, okay, Lord, we're coming today. We're going to be there before the day's over. It, it was going to end real quick. It didn't. There are two billion, 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 three times, billion, billion, billion tons of gas that make up the sun. I don't know how you measure that again, but that's what they say. Over every square inch of the core of the sun, there presses down the crushing weight of a million, million pounds of matter. The only thing that keeps it from imploding is the energy of those gases burning 
and it keeps it all in check. Again, what an amazing creation it is. Energy is the only thing that keeps him collapsing. The internal temperature of the sun is estimated to be 25 million degrees Fahrenheit. No wonder you get sunburn if you go out without your shirt on. The sun consumes 657 million tons of hydrogen every second. Every second. But there is enough gas there for it to burn for another 50 billion years. I'm not going to hang around to wait to see. I'm going to go when the Lord calls. And all that information, and the Bible says, the Lord holds the universe in the palm of his hand. Now what kind of God can help when you're facing an impossible situation? If God is all that the Bible tells us he is, that he can hold all of the universe, all of creation in the palm of his hand, he's a pretty big God. I think I can trust him with the problems that I may encounter in my life. Verse 3 says, our maker never slumbers. You wait till you get my age. You sit in your recliner, you'll slumber. It's not hard. You just fall asleep without even thinking about it. Hezekiah was worried over how he was going to protect his people. He was not resting much at night. He was worried. He was praying. He was struggling. He knew these were perilous times, but he really wanted to believe that God would take care of him. We struggle with day-to-day problems. We may be having troubles in our marriage or with our children, or it may be financial problems. I want to remind you the all-powerful God that we worship is still on the throne. He can take care of whatever it is. Third, what will my helper do for me? Sometimes we're weak. We're not, we're not sure we can stand up under the pressures of life. Look at verse 3. <coughs> the psalmist says God will keep your feet from slipping. In verse 5 it says he will protect you. Verse 7 says the Lord will protect you from all harm. I fell off my roof so evidently those verses didn't apply. No, let me tell you. Accidents or illnesses that we may encounter does not mean that God is not at work in our situations. My accident was my own foolishness. I had ropes and safety harnesses almost within reach. I should have had it on. And I decided I'm going to be here a minute or two. I don't need it. Stupid. That was my problem. I sell a lot of metal at Builder's Discount. I tell every guy that comes out with a load of metal, if you're going to get on that stuff when you build that, you put a safety harness on. I can speak to that by experience. You need your safety harness. Some will, some won't. My own carelessness caused my accident. It wasn't God's fault. I believe he allowed it to happen to teach me a lesson. Uh, I don't get on roofs anymore. Wife's orders. Hezekiah took his problem to the Lord and the Assyrian king sent a letter that defied God and said all kinds of threats in it. Hezekiah went to the altar. Let's just use this communion table right here as that altar. Laid that letter before God and prayed over it, believing that God would answer his prayer. And that night, the Bible says one angel, one angel came. And 185,000 Assyrian soldiers died in one night. One angel. Jesus, it said, was told that he could pray and 10,000 angels would come. There used to be an old gospel song. 10,000, hey, it only took one to wipe out the whole Assyrian army. If God could have sent 10,000 angels, he could have wiped out the whole world. In fact, he didn't need any of them. He could have said one word and the whole world would have been destroyed if he'd wanted to. I saw a little post on the internet last night. A friend of mine had posted. (coughs) He said, you know, every one of the apostles either were killed for their faith or like John, he was exiled on the island of Patmos God's own son died on a cross. 
And yet somehow we in America think that we should never have a sickness, never have a problem, never have any kind of trouble in our life. And yet scripture says all of the followers of God, those that Jesus dealt with on a daily basis, went through major problems, major troubles in life. And sometimes we just doubt God because we got this little sickness or we got this little problem with our finances. We just don't believe God can help us. God must have abandoned us. Why do we think we are better than the disciples? Why do we think we're better than Jesus? If God allowed them to suffer, don't expect everything in your life to go perfect. But what I do want to say is when you turn to God, you'll find out He can help you in the middle of your situation. I don't know of very many times in my life when I have prayed and instantly the problem was resolved. It's happened a time or two, but not many. I cannot recall one time where God sent an angel and instantly delivered me. It just didn't happen for me like it happened for Hezekiah. But I have had God walk with me through many, many problems and difficulties. God walked with me through when my boys had to have surgery. God walked with me through when my wife had to have surgery. God walked with me through when I knew when I slipped on that roof. I, I wasn't sure I'd even live through it because when it started, I was going head first. If I'd landed on my neck or head, I'd have been either dead or paralyzed and I managed to get turned around and land on my feet. I'm grateful for broken ankles because it could have been my life. God walked with me through five surgeries to get all that corrected. Listen, life is not meant to be a bed of roses where you never have a problem, never have trouble. I don't think we learn without going through some heartaches and troubles in our life. But what we do need to learn is we got a God that's big enough if he can hold the whole universe in the palm of his hand. He can take care of the problems you face in your life. Seldom will God provide some kind of dramatic deliverance. He walks with you through it. Jews in that day, in Hezekiah's day, inscribed verses from Mosaic law on the gates of their homes. Devout Jews today usually have some kind of little metal cylinder attached to the right door frame of their house so when they open the door to go out, they see that little cylinder. The Jewish man I built a wheelchair ramp for a few days ago had one at his door. Still practiced by the Jews. And in that is verse 8 of this psalm. The Lord will protect your coming and going, both now and forever. And a devout Jew, when he goes out the door, he stops a moment, usually puts his hand on that little cylinder and says, Lord, protect me in my business, protect me in my travels, protect me today. And when he gets back home, he shuts that door and looks back at that cylinder and says, Thank you, God, for bringing me back home safe and taking care of my life. Why are we not that committed as Christians? God takes care of us every day. If you get on an interstate highway today, you're putting your life on the line every time you get on the road. In fact, don't have to be an interstate. The church from Smithfield had two people killed on 96. One in the van, they hit another vehicle, killed somebody this week. You don't know when it's going to be. Lord, protect us as we go out and as we come in. We seek God's forgiveness. We need his presence. We need his help in our lives. Every day. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for these moments we could spend today realizing, Lord, that the real needs in our life are not going to be met by the military and not going to be met by the government, not going to be met by some government program, some social handout. The real needs in our life can only be met by the God that we worship. 
Lord, you watch over and protect us day after day. And we sometimes take that for granted. You help us with the hard things in life. When we have marital issues or financial issues or problems with our kids, Lord, you're there to walk with us through those difficult times. And sometimes we don't even say thank you. Father, would you do in our hearts what you need to do this morning that we could realize how much we depend on you. And may we call out to you for the help that we need. Lord, as we come to this time of invitation, perhaps there's someone here who's never trusted Christ as their Lord and Savior. May they come forward at this time and say, I want Jesus in my life. I need his protection. Lord, there are others of us here who are struggling with some issues in our life and perhaps we just want to kneel at the altar and pray or, Lord, I'll be glad to pray with them as well. Lord, would you speak to us? And then from what you say, May we respond in a way that pleases you. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You come as God speaks to your heart this morning. Please rise. The Lord has spoken to you in some way today. I'm going to ask Brother Jack who will join my wife at the back. We'll be back there to uh, speak to you as you leave. We appreciate him coming and sharing with us this morning. I told Wayne to let you know it was five minutes, but he evidently forgot. Sorry. Uh, but uh, we're grateful that you were able to figure out a way to shorten your message down a little bit and, uh, and still share with us the meaningful things about it. Uh, you know, we, we pass these holidays sometimes and, and don't understand the significance of what they were created for. So many people given so much when they gave their life to help us enjoy what we enjoy in this country. 
Uh, we have a deacon leading us in prayer this morning. If you'll come. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day to be able to come out and uh, worship in your house, Lord, to, uh, to look towards uh, the many blessings you've blessed our lives with, Lord, the people in our lives that have um, fought not only for this country, Lord, but for, uh, for spiritual um, guidance as well in our lives, Lord, our mothers, fathers, grandparents, and, and just um, forefathers, Lord, that have allowed us to be able to be here today. We just uh, give you glory for all that. We thank you for uh, the guidance, again, and, and your will in our lives. We continue to search out how we could uh, walk closer to you as a church, Lord. Help us to, to draw closer and uh, be unified as we uh, look towards the future and uh, what your plans are in Kenley, Lord, and how we can uh, line up with what you're doing and how you're working. Lord, we just ask you to um, guide our steps, guide our words, guide our thoughts, Lord. Help us to stay away from uh, those areas in our lives where the darkness may reside, Lord. Just shine a light upon those and give us the strength to to face uh, those and, and to act, Lord, and to speak to people we need to talk to and, and to um, just find forgiveness to move forward and, Lord, to forgive others. Lord, we just ask that you, you bless the Pastor Search Committee, Lord, as they continue to work hard to uh, to see what your will is, Lord. Guide us as, as one unified body as well as we support and care for one another, Lord. Be with those who are not here, Lord. We thank you again for and all the servicemen and women who uh, could not be here today for uh, the sacrifices that they have made. Please help us to be able to reach out to those family members and continue to help us support, Lord, in your love, in your name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.